Hey everybody, I'm Rodney Gaylor from Rod's World. This is part three of four videos. Uh, on this video, I'm actually finishing up the epoxy pour and getting the, you know, removing the mold and actually getting it ready to be put on this wooden stand. So enjoy the video and I'll see you on part four. I would think if I don't leave a white spot of just a hunk of resin that this should cure uh, when I wet it out it should turn it back to normal color and what I'm talking about on a white spot like if I leave a hunk of see how it's got hunks of stuff if I leave that in there it may not cure out I mean it may not look I may turn it white. I hope it hope it fixes it. I don't know if you can see where I drilled him out. I believe it a wet out and make it look make it look uh clear again. Okay. And what I can do on this deep hole here is drill a hole through here. If this turns out good, I can drill a hole and then turn it on its end and fill out my air spots back up underneath. But when a crankbait hits the ground, uh, hits the water, it makes a like a swoosh type thing too. So that may be it may look good when the light hits it. I'd have to see it before I do any more work on it. I did see my fishing line that was in there. It's it's running kind of up through here. So it ain't pulled a straight line. It did move on me. But you'd have to look for it unless the light hits it shows it. And once again, if it just hit the water, it would probably be like that. So let me sand this out. And here's some sandpaper. 220 is what I want to do because this is real shiny. I don't want it to release. I do want to get these high spots off right here, too. What I want it to do is just be able to bond to itself without this being a release and. Real, and just like this is a release on the sides that breaks off. I don't want my layer here to break off. Just a little bit of sandpaper should make a difference.
guess the hardest spot to hit would be in here. I don't have to have it a sand it a lot, just to, just a little bit. I'm gonna take this down a little bit better. Just where them air bubbles hit. What it was was some high bubbles came up, and I wanted to knock them off. So it, there's something black in that one. Let's see, a little black spot there. I don't know what that is. Get rid of it, though. Okay. There's two little bubbles here. It showed up after I sanded. Okay. Well, I'm getting ready to mix up another pour and do that. So let me get it mixed up and I'll come back. Okay, just mixed it up another batch. Let's hope this batch does it. I don't have to do any more, but I may have to add more. I don't know. I'm going to slowly let this fall in them holes. Hmm, that don't look good. Oh, well. We'll see what it looks like. That one looked better than that one hole. Let's see what happens here. It's cleared out pretty good now. It filled it all in. And them spots I ground away. This guy still ain't out of the... That's 
almost to the top and I've still got some showing. So I do have to mix up just a hair more. And I need to flash that off. Let me flash that off there. See all the bubbles? But I do gotta put more on. Okay, let me mix up another batch and get it right up to the top because it's still got stuff sticking out. He's still sticking out, so. Okay, I mixed me up a little bit more. Put it in a new cup this time so I could read it because that one's got hardened so far up, so I had to make sure. I did it level, perfect on this one on 50-50. But uh, let's see if we can't cover these guys up and get them under there. Uh, this guy here, I may cut him off. He's too far. Just get him out of the way. This one too, it's... That one I might be able to stick down in there. As long as they don't want to keep rising up. I think everything else is pretty well below it. So here we go. I got there's. That guy there's sticking up. Get rid of him. Okay. <clears throat> I only mixed up a little bit this time, about six ounces. Uh, so let's see, I don't want to run it over, of course. We're going to put her on it. And I, I don't care to mix more up, I just don't want to get too much that I'm just wasting resin. He's covered up. That's right to the edge there, but it may level out. Okay. If I have to, I'll put a stick or something under that side over there and bring it back this way to get it to where I got plenty in there. Let's see where we're at. This guy is barely under. That's still sticking up. If I could hook that under something else. Help. Okay. Guys, barely under. See, I've got some more I can go, so let me get another stick and see if I can't raise that up. Okay, I've got it all pretty well under. I see the wood is not quite under here, so I did mix up another four ounces, and we're going to see if that'll get me over it. Uh, I'm going to pour it right here around the wood. And I'd rather do it in little small small 
small pores than I would to have way too much and waste a bunch of resin. Even though it's going to take longer. Because this may level down and I still won't have enough. Now I'll have to do it again. But if I do, I do. I, I'm, I'm small enough pour that it shouldn't gas off this time. But it wasn't in the world that it gassed off the last time in that one spot because I was able to just take that drill and, and do it. You can still see a little bit of smoky stuff up there, but... That's about to the edge. I did put a stick under it over here to make it come back this way more because it was running out. It was, you know, over here was more, more of my mold than over there in that area. It was done wanting to be to the top. So it kind of leveled that out. I think it'll be fine on that. It looks like the wood is covered by a little bit. So let me let me take the uh, torch and gas this real quick. Get all the little bubbles popped. And let's see where we end up after this one. Or if I have to add more. Because it's going to slowly keep going that way. And it may get back to wood showing again. The wood is covered at the moment. We're all the way up. I mean, I could pour a little bit more in it, but man, it's getting close. I want a decent little layer over the wood. See if we can see it from this angle. How much wood? Oh, it ain't much. I think I'll put, I think I'll pour another two ounces on top. Just to get it a little bit more on top of the wood. Mix up another two, uh, four ounces. Okay, final pour no matter what. Uh, try to get this wood under the, under it best I can. This should be enough to get me there, I would hope. Now, the thing you gotta do is just let it kick off and get hard, and then I can make it into the lamp. Might as well save my sticks if I can. Okay, let's let that level off. We'll pop some bubbles. I did have to pull a string of hair right out of that thing there again. And that's balsa wood. I said earlier that it was a... Uh, I'd said before that it was hollow. It's not. It's balsa wood in that crankbait. That's a, a DT6. So that would be balsa wood, come to think about it. The good thing about it, this guy's way deep underneath. 
I believe that's got it now. I think it's looking good on being deep enough. Let me flash it off with the torch. And... On the pop bubbles. Okay. That's right up to the top. That wood's good and covered now is what I wanted. I want it to be like a quarter inch all the way around it. So it's just a solid little thing. You'll see these little air bubbles here. They are actually bubbles from before. So those will not pop. Which is fine. Okay, let's let it dry. I think I'm good. Up here's some. And what I'll probably have to do, since this thing is still dripping little bubbles out of this spot, I will probably have to take and, uh, like that drill bit before, I can't believe that didn't see. I guess there's a little straw hole going up in there that's letting that get air out. Bad thing is it's making it look streaky. But that may settle out. Okay. Let me hit that with that torch right there where I put them little bubbles up on top. See if I can't torch it out. Coming out of that crankbait. Yeah, pit pop. Right. And what I'll have to do is come back and check. So there's another one popped up. I'll come back and pop them and check it every so often. That should get me. Oh, there's one popped out of the little uh, crow dead. That's a fresh bubble. I actually popped him. See, there's a whole string of bubbles. Hmm. Oh well. I'll let them do their thing and then do it. Pop them. See what it looks like dried. Another bubble popped out. Which is a good thing. That means that resin is seeping into that body of that crawl. And it's pushing the air out. That's what you would think. So it's hardening all them guts and everything in there. At least that's, a, that's what I'm hoping is happening. Okay. Until next time. Looks like everything's dried. We've got a couple of bubbles. I've got, once again, bubbles coming out of here. Right here where the uh, crankbait is. I'm going to have to drill that and refill it. Uh, that's fine there. I've got a few bubbles coming out. Right here for that crawl, it came out of its eye. 
so it bleeded air out. There's a little bubble there I should be able to get rid of. And then a bubble coming out of this one's face. And I'll just go down there and hit them bubbles. And look at the pearl in here, oh, how pretty. And that wood, and then look how pretty the wood is. So it looks pretty good. I actually got a thinking this here looks like a wave of a water. So that top I may leave just like it is. I may clean it up a little bit, but this looks just like a bait just entered the water. Kaboosh. So I mean that's actually looking really neat and different. Kind of happened that way with the rippling of the water. I mean it looks like I don't know if you can see it good, but it looks like that's the bait entering into the water, so I like that. I'm planning on buying me a piece of wood to put under here or something. I may use steel. I'll have to see what I've got. Weld me up some steel or get a piece of wood. I'm going to check this piece of wood first, I guess. Some dark wood's what I'd put and have the light come up so you're noticing this and not the dark wood at the bottom. Uh, I'm, I believe I can go ahead and break this apart even though I'll probably fill these few spots with uh, take the drill and just take a drill bit and clean out these holes and re-pour more on top of it and let it dry but I'm gonna think I think I'll take all this apart and look at it with it all apart and look at the back side and everything too. So let me break these molds off. I don't think it's going to be too hard. To get the plexiglass off, it breaks so brittly that by running the torch on it, it melts it a little. And it helps it actually start stretching instead of snapping. That's what I'm finding out. See how it stretched a little bit instead of just snapping? So, well, I just broke it right then, but that's been helping get it off instead of. See how it's coming right off? With a flexi plexiglass is hot, it's helping it release. Okay, there's a big hunk of it. I've got one little piece here. I believe I got all the plexiglass. Right here's a little piece of plexiglass I don't have off. And that's got to do where the tape was. So it won't take much. What it is is where the resin run underneath the two. There's a little thing of resin there that's keeping it from releasing. There it goes. Now see what it is is that's resin underneath it. That's not plexiglass There we go So that's actually resin the corners and I gotta shave them down next Okay, there's a little piece of plexiglass and some tape or something 
That's just where that mold. Le leaked up underneath plexiglass. And it's plexiglass to there too. It's tape on there's burning. So I got that off. Okay. Okay. And that's got all the plexiglass off. Now I just got to shave it in and fix it up. I do have my lights done over here that I can actually do, but we'll show that here when I get it all ready. Okay. I went back. And did with my drill, just like I did before. Cleaning out them air bubbles that was up on top surface. As you can see. And even that one, I may have to put a drop in there. Like a, uh, and let it dry and then come back and fill it. It looks like it's going all the way to the crankbait on that one. Okay, what I'm going to do is is actually trim the edges to curve them down a little bit I could run a router over it but I want to get the lip off first because this has got a little lip where I poured it and it was up against the plexiglass I'm going to go all the way around and clean all of it off and I still haven't decided if I want this wave to stay in there I, like I said I can't think I, it looks just perfect like it's going right in there for that crankbait hitting water so I'll look at it and then I'm going to true every, everything else up. But first thing I'll do is roll this corner off and then go from there. Okay, what I've done is I've sanded all the edges down. Uh, of course, that's just the first. This GoPro may make it look worse than this, but uh, that was with that grinder and this grinder, or this uh, air tool. And I'll be running the DAs over it, bringing it back in, making it all, and then polishing and buffing it and all that good stuff. But I've got to leave here in a second, so I'm going ahead and... I've put resin back in them holes that I did before, and I'll have to sand them down and actually uh, grind them in and do all that work too. So right now, I am putting the, uh, filling up some bad spots is what I'm doing. Till next time. Okay, I took two pieces of oak. I found a piece of oak at the Home Depot, two foot long, cut it in half. Took some resin when I patched up these things. Uh, I went ahead and put some resin on the board and sandwiched together. So now I've got a solid piece of oak. Hopefully that will look pretty good. Uh, it has dried overnight. I'm sure I'll have to clean off the back side. trim this wood up. This will be my base for the uh, for my lamp. Uh, it should look something like that. But I'm thinking about doing this real dark instead of real light. Staying it dark. 
or burn it dark. I may do the burn thing on it, but pro probably not. Probably stain it. These look good. Good and solid. So now I can clean it up and keep it going with it. Got some little high spots, low spots right in. See, it's got the little shiny spot. Uh, one spot's low, one spot's high. So I gotta bring it all back in to where they're level and polish it with the buffer. It should look better than like it is now. So this is 220 sandpaper. And I'll go 220. I'll go three, three hundred and something. I think it's three twenty, three forty or something. And then, you know, in the six hundred grid, and then all the way down to twelve hundred, thousand, twelve hundred, and bust it. When I buff it, it should take out some of the, even though this looks real shiny right now, it will actually do a little better. It should. When I buff it, but I don't need to buff it. I don't need to really do no sanding on any of it. It's pretty shiny. I just need to buff it. Everything looks the same. I took uh, my grinders and cornered, shaved down the corners. I've got it down to a 80 grit right now. Top part, I'm leaving this wave on it. I think the wave looks good. Looks like a wavy water, like this crankbait hit, entered into the water. I'm gonna leave it like that, I think it looks good. It looks pretty good. I don't think I did much to it. All these little scratches I got going in it right now, I've got to get them out. Plus the other grips. So. Still feel it. That one feels pretty good. This one's got a little bit more in it. Than this one, I can still feel it. So. They keep saying it. Okay, I, I sanded this down with 220 sandpaper, and then I took my little grinder over to had a scotch brett pad, and actually buffed over it, shined it up even better, and instead of sanding down with the uh, sandpaper going from a thousand grit, you know, 600 to a thousand to 1200 to 2000, I've got a buffer and I've got some different compounds uh, this one is maximum cut it's like a six where am I at? okay maximum cut it's like a, a 600 to 800 grit so I'm gonna buff that down with that and then here's one that's like a thousand grit some compound I've got haze remover and then this one is a finer one that's even finer than it 
Um, I don't see the grid on it, but it's a different brand. But then I've got some car wax that you can do over it that's even finer. Car wax seems like it does better than any of the compounds because it's more of a wax. So, uh, so I'm going to buff these up. And what I'll do, i got to shake it up a little bit because it's been in there a while. Uh, I'll just put a little bit on there and do it. If you see compound on, if you're buffing and you see compound dried up on your part, put more compound down and it takes it right off. So, I mean, that's kind of what you got to look at on when you're buffing. Because if you put something on, say you put wax on something and you try to buff it off and it won't come off because it's dried on it, it just won't move it. Put more wet compound down there to take it off. So, something to know. Okay, I'm gonna buff this top. I'm gonna buff the sides and see what we get. I'm gonna buff everything all the way around except for the. Yeah, I'll, probably, I'll have to hit this on top too. The top has this funky looking spot on it, which. Could look like a bad spot or could look like that crankbait fell in. So, see, that's the wave going on. So, I kind of like the wave deal. And it looks just perfectly lined up to where the crankbait would have nailed the water. So, I'm not too, I don't know if I want to fix it. I may put a little resin in it to take any sharp corner off. But it really looks like a wave, like a, something that's happened. So, let's see what happens. Okay, I have did one layer of this. I'm going to go around the edges and hit it with it because i got to polish it up and the bottom with this same compound. 600 grit. i got to do them spots there too. 600 grit to 800 grit compound buffing compound and I'm going to try to go ahead and put a little some on that a little bit on this this is the back side okay this is just one of my edges I want to clean up got a little thick it probably slings stuff all over me okay let's see what happens this may not be filming good, I don't know. I need to somehow hold it. I can do it here. Go ahead and get these off one of Let's take this clamp and that one's stuck. I'm going to put some resin drip down on to clean it off. Okay, let's take this and a couple of paper towels. Have to put a clamp over here too, but right now let's try. It.
good thing about it these little buffers are cheap i think i got it like at harbor freight or northern uh for like 54 bucks or something i don't know it's been a long time since i bought one of those that's just electric power one you got air ones and everything else but the little electric one does good you can buy these little pads like at the same place uh you can get them at different places auto parts usually if you get them at the harbor freight or uh northern they're cheaper so it's not too bad okay my resin i set it out in the sun and now as you can see it's starting to kick i don't know if you can see it's got a big hunk of it in there pulling up so it ain't all real runny it's starting to kick so i'm gonna go take this and instead of putting a little bitty stuff i'm gonna put a big hunk of junk around make it look like a wave if i can see how that's sticking straight up let's see what happens here i don't know if you can see it or not but where it stays up there see how it's all chunky see it's kicking quick now Okay, let me take the camera off and do it. Okay. The resin's just about totally kicked. I don't know if you can see that. There's just a little bit in there. See how it's real stringy? And I've put... I've put a layer around... Big old horse, big old bundle. Uh, you got a hornet. Don't want him to get me. But anyway, here, here's the uh, either a mess I made or made it look like what I wanted to. It does look like a surface thing has happened there, but we're gonna look at it. That should look like it's splattered in there. I think I could actually do a couple little things in the center. I don't know why I'm doing it. That may be overthinking it, but I think it will help. I'll see if everybody else looks at it that's around me, that my boys and stuff. Let them look at it and see if they think it looks okay, if it looks like a mess up. If it looks like a mess up, I'll grind it off. I kind of think it looks okay. It looks like a big bush. Okay, something to know, uh, when the resin is kicking off, like this one is, and it's getting extremely hot and putting off, this is when it puts off its most gases. So you do not want to breathe this. Is, this is the worst time to breathe because the chemicals are coming through the air where it's gassing off. If you're over a mold and you're working on it and it starts gassing off, that's the time that you, know, you need your respirators on or whatever because that's when it's going to hurt you the most. So try not to to breathe the gassing off resins. That's the worst. Okay, this is still drying up here. I hadn't done anything to it yet, but I've, I've set it on my piece of wood. I'm marking. So I'm going to take this and go down into the wood a little bit. Now, my wood is still not done. I haven't trimmed it or nothing. So I'm kind of estimating where it should be if it's trimmed out and routed up real pretty. But I'm just marking it. I would like this to go down into the wood just a little bit towards the seated down in it and then epoxy it to it. It won't never move again. There we have it. Now I gotta shave that out. I 
Okay, I've came back. It's dried the next day. And it don't look too bad. I mean, uh, you may say oh, it looks like a mess, but it does kind of look like the water just looped in it. So I believe I can get away with that. So this is pretty well done, except for putting the wood piece on, which is this piece here I'm going to work on, try to work on it today. To where cut it out and cut a slot so I can put my hose in it, my light in it, my hose light, and get this piece of wood up to looking good. And then I can glue it to it, which I'll just take some resin and resin it to it. But that's what I'm working on today. Thank you for watching part three. Part four will continue showing how to install the uh, wood uh, piece plus uh, adding the light and getting the wood piece ready for the lamp itself and I'll be glued together. Four will be the last of the, uh, of the lamp. So thank you for watching again and see you on part four.